Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to ask you to close your eyes, take a breath. Those of you on the internet land, close your eyes, take a breath. Allowance is the doorway to the kingdom, which is joy. It's not possible for you to be without love. It's not possible for me to be without love. It is not possible for you to be alone now. It is not possible for me to be alone. It is not possible for you to taste death. It is not possible for me to taste death. It's not possible for you to taste genuine loss. It is not possible for me to taste genuine loss. Take a breath. You do not have to believe this you do not have to accept this you do not have to believe it's true some of it's going to start on you some of the things are going to be hard to believe it is not possible for you to suffer the dream of separation. It is not possible for me to suffer the dream of separation. It is not possible for you to be apart from your creator. It's not possible for me to be apart from my creator. It is not possible for you to fail. It's not possible for me to fail. <coughs> it is not possible, it is not possible for you to harm anyone or anything. It's not possible for you to harm anyone or anything. It is not possible for you to, it is not possible for me to harm anyone or anything. It is not possible for you to be guilty of sin. It's not possible for me to be guilty of sin. Now consider each one of those statements. And what you'll probably discover are many pictures, many ideas, and even certain feelings that seem to indicate to you that the statements might not be entirely true.
what I want to do tonight is to cover about 10 minutes of the material, throw it open for comments or any discussion about it, and then I'm going to push forward again. And I want to hear as much of, uh, of what a way of mastery has to say as possible tonight. I need to hear what the way of mastery is saying tonight. I don't really need to hear my opinions tonight, your opinions tonight. I want to hear what the truth is saying, telling me, and I want to hear your opinions tonight, and I want to hear my opinions tonight. I want to hear something different. I want to, t I want to go deeper. I have things I need to see differently in my life right now. Uh, hopefully you might have some too. <coughs> I don't know, you might be enlightened. I just came here just to check me out. I don't know. We're gonna be on the section in the way of mastery that's called the allowance lesson 21. And I'm gonna start with the paragraph on page 252. And it starts off with simply see what the answer is. Let's say that you didn't believe what you just heard, that you didn't really believe that you were not alone or, or that there's nothing but love. He says, then what you simply say to yourself is, I'm free in this moment to choose to see things differently. He said <coughs> that in the book that no matter what, no matter what you think about yourself, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe you're loving or not, whether you believe you're innocent or not, whether you believe there's God with you or not, whether you believe anything or not, it hasn't changed anything about us. It hasn't changed one, you haven't changed one thing about yourself. In any belief that you have about yourself that's not loving. So you can criticize all day. I can criticize all day. You can judge all day. You can play all day. You can be sad all day. You can be depressed all day. He says, but in the end of it, you still haven't changed anything about yourself. You still love, I'm still loved, we're still powerful, we're still innocent, we're still not alone, we're still the creators. And so, so in this moment, I am free in this moment to choose to see things differently. So you're free in this moment to choose to see things differently regardless of what you're feeling about anything in your life right now. You're free right now, and I'm free right now. I'm gonna say you, when I say you, I'm saying you because the book says you. I don't really like the word you a whole lot. But I'm saying, but someone says you, right? we just pretend it's talking about us. Okay. So he says, I can I am free in this moment to choose to see things differently. He says, then take a moment or two and just look around you. Then go back to the statement. And then say it to yourself again, I am free in this moment to choose to see things differently. And then say to yourself, this is the truth about me, and I want only the truth. So, so what is the truth about you? The truth about you is you are free in this moment to choose to see things differently. And then say, I want only the truth. Now, the problem when you say you want only the truth is that that means everything that's not the truth is going to be revealed to you. Everything that's not the truth is going to be revealed to you. Everything you think isn't the truth is going to be revealed to you. And he says, but once you do that, then just put it away and go about your business. <laughs> I like that. Because the only thing that can possibly be transformed is your mind. So it's by the power of the mind itself that purification occurs. By the power of the mind itself, purification occurs. <coughs> Just as desire is essential to realization, willingness too. Just as desire is essential to realization, so too is willingness and allowance essential to realization. 
So if, if I want to experience a deep spiritual realization, if I really want to experience love, uh, I've got to have desire, willingness, and allowance. Whatever it is that you want to manifest in your life, it will only come to you through desire, willingness, and allowance. He says, you've heard us say unto you many times that you are required only to offer a little willingness. He says, what you would call a smidgen of willingness. So I want you to measure out a smidgen of willingness. He says, which is the same as a, a smidgen of allowance. And sprinkle a smidgen of willingness and a smidgen of allowance upon your experience. Sprinkle a smidgen of willingness and a smidgen of allowance across the world. Sprinkle a smidgen of willingness and a smidgen of, allow of allowance upon your own being. Allow all things. That's the section we're going to cover. It's called Allow All Things. It's going to be, you're going to find it's going to be very difficult sometimes to just hear this and listen to it when you don't have the book. Not because it's not okay if you don't have the book. But there's some truths that are so different from what our ego has heard that sometimes it's easier when you have the material in front of you to stay focused. So if you find yourself going unconscious, it's okay. Because we're going to hear some stuff that's exactly opposite to what we've been taught. And when that happens, the ego resists tremendously. Um, Number one, he says, become willing to be one who cultivates the ability to allow all things. The man that is free can allow all things. The man that is imprisoned <coughs> cannot allow all things. So if your man is imprisoned, then you are a person who has a hard time allowing everything. For the mind that is imprisoned is imprisoned because it insists that it perceives that what it perceives should be different in itself but that the perceiver need not change. So he's saying that a man that's imprisoned is a man that wants everything <coughs> else to change but the man. In other words, I want everything and everybody to be different other than my thinking. I want everything to be different, but I keep thinking the same way. He says, that's an imprisoned mind. And that's how you can know if your mind is imprisoned. Your mind is imprisoned if you keep on expecting something outside yourself to shift without you shifting your thinking. One who cultivates the ability to allow is cultivating in truth the very act of forgiveness. It is releasing the world from your insistent, insistence that its perceptions be held as right. Okay, so a man that's letting go of being imprisoned is a man that is no longer insisting that it be right. A man that is a man that is, that wants to be free is a man that's willing to be wrong in order to be free and happy. So a man that's not in prison is a man that's willing to be wrong. A man that is in prison is a man that believes it has to be right no matter what. Then it goes on to say, a man that's free is a mind that is releasing <laughs> itself from the need to hold on to its perceptions. That so as so as my mind is free of its need to hold on to its way of seeing things, then my mind will be free. And it's when the mind is free that your ass will follow. <laughs> your body is going to be wherever your mind is. I like the word ass, it has more juice. I pray for spiritual classes where they say ass. <laughs> so I just thought I'd have one. 
the right internet folk too. <laughs> yeah, I know you could you like that though. <laughs> you know, the the internet's been freeing me so much because I found out that there were thousands of people who like me the way I am and the way I express myself, however it is. And that's been so cool. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you have this tendency to believe that you have to change who you are, not be who you are, not be yourself, and not be authentic. Because, especially when you're a teacher, you think you're really tempted to believe that uh, everything, your substance, your everything that is going to come through being right. So you get real deep into how can I present myself in such a way that will be proper and liked by everyone so that they will come back again. Yeah. And then one day you realize you're not sustained by the love of God and you don't give a damn. <laughs> Because you know the right people are going to always be there all the time. Always. Always. And so you stop being so afraid of who's in your life and who's not. That's so relaxing. So, allowing all things, trusting all things, then, then you don't realize that you all look radiant. Everybody's faces might not look very happy, but you look radiant. Because who you are is, being, is totally unaffected by how you're feeling about how your day is going. That is so cool. It just gets rid of so much guilt when you realize that. It just frees you. You should feel like a weight being lifted off your shoulders if you really hear what I'm saying. So he says, trust all things thereby embrace and transcend all things. Allowance follows on the heels of desire. For when you desire the kingdom or the truth above all things, when you desire love above all things, when you desire truth above all things, you have no choice but to discover that you must allow the world to be as the world is. So a person who is really getting this a person who is not kidding and they say I want God above all things I want source above all things I want love above all things I want truth above all things he says you can tell when you've gotten to that point because at that point you will start to just allow the world to be as the world is you will start allowing your mama to be as your mama is you will start allowing your boss to be as your boss is you start allowing your house to be as your house is you start allowing your friends to be as your friends are. You start to allow the world to be as the world is. So if I'm not willing to let the world be the way the world is according to the way of mastery, it means that my mind is imprisoned, I'm not free yet, and I don't really want God and the truth above all things. That's what it's saying. For you have not known how the world is. You have only known your perceptions of the world. You've never known how your friends are. You only know your perceptions of your friends. You don't really know how your money situ situation is. You know only your perception of your money situation. <coughs> But the comforter, your higher self, the higher power, the Holy Spirit will heal the, those perceptions. So if you would like your perception corrected so that your mind can be free, so that your life can be joyful and abundant and happy, then that requires your little willingness to let your way of seeing things be changed. So to have everything I've ever wanted in my heart all I need to do is have the willingness to let my perceptions be healed by God, by the Holy Spirit, by source. There's only one problem with that. I don't really believe in God. I believe in myself, my wisdom, my intellect, my studying, my voice. God is a very beautiful concept that I'd love to be true. There is a part of me that does not believe in a higher power. 
and I'm willing to admit it, but notice I said there was a part of me that didn't believe in a higher power. I didn't say there wasn't a part of me that did. But until you get in touch with the part of you that doesn't love you, doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in freedom, doesn't believe in giving, doesn't believe in caring, that it will continue to control your experience and bring pain into your life and your perception. So how do I get past it? I allow it. I don't spend all day doing battle with it. battling with the part of me that doesn't love me. I'm battling with the part of me that thinks that people don't care. I'm battling with the part of me that, you know, that, that doesn't get me. I'm battling with the part of me that judges and I'm battling with the part of me that criticizes. I'm battling. He says, allow it and transcend it. Allowing it is to transcend it. drives the ego nuts. Something some like this drives the ego nuts. Because the ego part of the mind, the part that thinks it's separate, that part can only sustain itself through conflict and fear. So if you were to allow it, and you know what it is, if you were to allow it, then there would be no conflict and there would be no fear. And then there would be no it. He says, as your perceptions are changed, the world magically becomes a different place. The world does become transparent and the world does become harmless. The world becomes virtually valueless, except for the value that the love would give it while it lasts. So let's go back. I have not known what the world is or anybody is. I've only known my perceptions of the world and of you and of everybody and everything in my life. We can be healed by source. We could be healed by the universe. We can be healed by the higher power. But in order for that to happen, what does heal mean? Heal means we can have our fear undone, our conflict undone, all right? And then it says, but you have to have a little willingness to let your perceptions be changed. And that little willingness to let your perception be changed is your little willingness not to have to be right about your version of what you think your problems are and even what you think the solutions to your problems are. How do you know that you don't know the solution to your problem for real, no matter what you think it is? Because you still have it. <laughs> so whatever you are telling yourself ain't true. So you just want to take your little idea of what you think is going on and the way you've described it, Earl, Earl, and you just need to throw it. You need to toss it because whatever you think the problem is, the course teaches that whatever you think the problem is, that if you really recognize what the problem was, the problem would be solved. So the mere fact that you don't <laughs> feel peace means you don't really know what's causing your conflict. And it's not whatever you're telling yourself it is. It's not your mom, it's not your father, it's not that out of circumstance, it's not anything that you're telling yourself the problem really is. That undoes the ego. So the ego takes the person's awareness away from that and makes them not hear it. So then we receive the answer, but then we don't see its relevance. Like, we get the answer, but we go, hmm, that didn't exactly float my boat. That didn't really make a really big difference. And the, and the truth is saying, that's because you think the problem is something else. You think the problem is something else other than what the problem really is. 
So, so we would just get to the point he said that we would just go, I'm never upset for the reason I think, that we'd be way ahead of the game. I was like, I was like, hey, tell me what you think your problem is, okay? And then you say, then you let them say what they think the problem is, and then you can then follow that up with, now we know exactly what is not the problem. We just want to make the we want to get there. So now that you've gotten through, like in detail about what you think the problem is, that's beautiful because that means now we have very wonderfully identified exactly what is not causing your upset. So you can just let that go. It, well, it is my husband. It is whatever it is. What it really is, he came home you know, at two o'clock this morning. Blah 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 blah. blah. No, that's the first thing you should eliminate as being the cause of your upset. That's where you should start. Start off with, it ain't your husband that's upsetting you. What is it then? Well, let's just eliminate him first. Why? Because if you eliminate him, you've gotten rid of 90% of what you think you're upset about. <laughs> because he was what you mentioned was causing your upset. Well, I think I'd be happy if I had more money, because if I had more money, I could do, go places, I could do things. I can even put something in your love offering. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm going to sure to do when I'm rich. Okay, so now we know that's not the problem. Now we know that's not the problem. And then, then the man goes, well, what is the problem? I'm not allowing. Deep. I, I, I feel separate from my source. Do you really think if we really felt connected to the, to the most powerful force in the universe that we would be worried about the things that we are worried about? Do you think for one second you would be sad if you knew you couldn't die, you were never alone, you completely loved, and you had abundance? Come on, we wouldn't be sad. So... Um, Allowance, beloved friends, is the process of letting go and trusting. It's the process. I'll let. I'll, I'll, I'll jump. No, wait. One more thing I want to say. He says, "When I change my mind, the world <coughs> will become harmless." That that when you change your mind, you will not see the world as dangerous to you at all. Isn't it interesting how? The truth is trying to let us know when we really have arrived or not. And if you really hear it, you can't be in denial anymore. Because I don't care how positive you think you are, can you honestly say you don't perceive any danger in the world <laughs> at all? So instead of getting depressed about that, it would just make me go, oh, that means I have not let the Holy Spirit heal my perceptions. It means I have not let my perceptions be changed yet. It means I'm still not allowing. See, what you would do is you would just tell yourself the truth about what's happening, and then the situation would change, and then the situation would shift. But it is never going to shift as long. Come, would you mind coming inside the circle with us? That would be great. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Be over there, over there all by yourself. Okay. I'll say that again because it's so important. One day you'll go, I see the world as dangerous. That means I have <coughs> not had the willingness to let my perception be completely changed. Which means there's still some part of me that wants to be right and wants to believe it really knows what the problem is which means there's some part of me that's still not allowing. And, that's, and that's the, that would be the process that the man would start to use. It would, it would go, I believe I'm still in danger. I'm not practicing the truth yet. <coughs> I'm mad at this person. It means that that's not really what I'm mad about. I wonder what it would be like to just let things be as they are. So you go, I wonder what it would be like. See, if I, if I wonder what it would be like to just let y'all be as you are. For me not to have any preferences about how I think you would, should be responding, or how you should be feeling, or how you should be acting. What would happen if I just noticed it, 
and then just let it pass by. He says, when you really have a free mind, if what you do is you let everything be as it is, you notice it, and you just let it pass by you. I let it be, I let you be as you are, I notice it, and then I just let you be as you are. He says, at that point, your mind will be free, <coughs> and you will be, you're going to watch your world magically transform into something that's totally harmless and helpful to you. But what do I do? First of all, I look at you, I have a script for you, I don't let you be, and never want to let you go, no matter what. And I try to cling as best I can to every little freaking thing I got and everybody I got, as long as I can. That's totally opposite. So, I'm going to stop right here, <coughs> throw it open for questions, comments, and discussion. And that's, and that's everybody's completely clear and totally in agreement and just want me to continue. I'm okay the way it goes. looks at me. <laughs> just kidding. No, I'm, no, no, this is it. This is a time for us to communicate with each other. Yeah. So uh, the perceptual whole basically is the denial that we're one with source. Yes. Okay. That's the only problem that we have is that, according to this, is that we think we're separate from source, that we think we're alone, on our own, and we think being enlightened means getting a whole lot of information so that you can <laughs> still be in charge of everything yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we say that's God's will. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like really the only problem is I'm feeling separate from source. Mm -hmm. Because if I thought I was connected with source, there wouldn't be anything in my life that would make me afraid. I'm only afraid because I'm trying to handle it on my own. Period. Anybody else? It, it, this uh, acceptance thing. Um, it, it's similar to what Jesus said when you know somebody hits you a limb, hit you on the other cheek too. No, no, no. no. Okay. No, no, so no, what's no. the difference between the, the, the difference? Yeah, everybody's like, <laughs> my, like my it's gonna be me, yeah, no, me, no, right? Me, so, me uh, allowing what's you. What's the acceptance? Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely unlike what you just meant. Okay. What what is what yeah. is Jesus no, talking I'll, about? I'll, in allow in allowance is your willingness to embrace what is. Well, I just got hit. You know, but if you truly embraced it, it wouldn't bother you. See, that's tricky. No, oh, oh, this is something that's important to keep in mind. So you become a doormat. Uh, you can deal with that truth any way you want to. You can tell yourself you'll be like a doormat and ask yourself, why was it that I went straight to the thing that would make me not want to accept allowance? I went straight to somebody smacking me, I went straight to, to being a doormat. Why did I, why out of all of the things I heard, why did I go there? Fear. Right, because there's a part of me that doesn't want to change my mind about allowing. So I've got to come up with something that I think I can allow, rather than starting out with how many things can I allow? And, the and, then, oh, and then work up to but well, first of all, if you are truly doing what this is saying, we were told that the world would be harmless. It didn't say you would be smacked. It said that the world would be a magical, harmless place. Because think about it. Where are people getting smacked? There's being, they're getting smacked in the world where they don't allow anything. The smacking is happening in the world we're already in where there is no true violence. <coughs> And also keep in mind that we've only covered one or two paragraphs of the chapter. <laughs> I mean, I just want to kind of throw that out to y'all before y'all come to a smashing judgment about, about allowance is that allow us, to, allow yourself to hear it before you, you know. Judge you know. your, like you were saying, the part um, that you were saying that I liked is like that part of you that doesn't believe in God or that part of you that goes instantly to the doormat or fear to not judge it. To allow that too and just psh, let it go and not give it And you could also fire. have a, you could also have allowance about your uh, unwillingness to let yourself be smacked. 
You understand what I'm saying? Uh, See, you. It was almost like I was gonna. I was gonna make it not okay to to for me to allow myself to have the perception that I should not be hit. See, allowance is embracing whatever is. <coughs> right? It's, it's, allowance is big enough to embrace everything. Mm -hmm. So if I go, I don't. I will not allow myself to be smacked. Then that's still a form of allowance. Is it not? Right. Well, I, no, I think you can draw the line of physical violence. Okay. If you're uh, what, the same what, I, person, what I'm right? saying is allowance is what we're being told would allow us to change our mind to have a safe world. And what we have to do is we can, it's okay to look at that anyway and analyze it from any angle. I'm not trying to say don't do that. Okay, but what I am saying to us, and what this book is saying to us, is when we get through with all of that, it's going to be allowance that's going to take us where we want to go. Mm -hmm. Even after we get through questioning it, trying to scare ourselves with it, which is just a way to keep what the first principle was: of an imprisoned mind does what it doesn't want to allow its perceptions to change, <laughs> because. I'm used to being in a world that's about attack, defend, attack, defend, attack, defend. So if you if you make it sound like in the least <coughs> that I'm not to defend, then I'm going to go into fear because all I know is attack, defend. I don't know what happens when you stop attacking and stop defending. And what we're being told is that what happens when you stop attacking and stop defending is you will be safe because you're the one that's generating all the attack that you're experiencing and it's coming from you. <laughs> so when you stop putting on a red shirt in front of the mirror, you will stop seeing a red shirt on you when you stand in front of the mirror. So if, I, if, I, if I want attack to not be in my world, I'm going to have to admit I must have some attack thoughts whether I realize it or not, and I must stop attacking. Mm -hmm. That's the only way it's going to stop. It can't be I'm going to stop when you stop, it's really, when I stop, you will stop. And then the ego will say, well, I'm going to give you a situation where you're being attacked and it looks like you don't attack back. And then it's going to look like the person keeps on attacking you. Because then you can feel okay about not stopping your attack. So when you say you're going to, so the Course says, when you say you're getting ready to change and you're getting ready to make a big change, and this is very important, he says at the beginning, you're going to do everything you can to make it not happen. <coughs> You're going to say exactly what you want. And then he says, then the part of you that doesn't believe you deserve it because you would have already been having it if you thought you deserved it, it would already be there. He says, that part of you that's keeping you from having it, that's why the only reason why it's not there. He says, and that part of you is going to do everything in its power to justify your not having it or staying exactly the way you are. So, you're gonna, so you say, I'm going to go out and I'm going to have this very successful business. Well, the part of you that doesn't believe you deserve to have that is going to do everything again to kind of sabotage it and give you a business failure. Then you can go, well, see there, I really tried to change my mind and it didn't work out. It's almost like when you say you're getting ready to make a big shift, it's almost like you would be doing yourself a favor if you allowed yourself to fail. Much more than if you're trying to start something new and you think it's not working unless you get miraculous results immediately. Because your ego is going to try to make you think you don't deserve what you're trying to give yourself, but you'd already have it, is what he's saying. You know, you'd already have the joy that you want, unless there was some part of you that didn't think you deserved to have it. So for you to think that part of you isn't going to try to, to, to try to defend itself and keep you in pain, means that, you know, you're being completely unrealistic. You know, if I say I want to be a really nice person <coughs> and start loving my daddy, Okay, then that's the when my dad is probably going to do something that's going to be tempted to upset me more than anything because I, I'm trying to go from not loving my daddy to loving my daddy. I had justification for not loving my daddy. I built up a whole experience around not loving my daddy, not allowing my daddy. So, of course, when I say I'm going to do it differently, I'm going to create it in my perception where my daddy probably does something that makes me really mad immediately because I didn't really want to love my daddy to begin with because I was already mad with my daddy. Does that make sense? 
if you're already mad at somebody and you already know you got grievances and you're trying to bring yourself to the point that you don't have the grievances anymore, why in the world would you not think your old grievances wouldn't still be there to try to stop you? Mm -hmm. so, so, so if I allow the grievance, then I'll go ahead and go beyond the grievance with my daddy. I, I allow the grievance, I got the grievance, I embrace the grievance, I feel the grievance, and now I'm going to choose to see my daddy differently. I hate your guts, but I'm creating it that I hate your guts, and I want to see you differently. But don't mistake, make no mistake about it, I hate your freaking guts. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I hate my freaking job. I detest going to my freaking job, but I now am going to choose to see my job differently. <coughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, this might not make sense because I've been crazing it around in my head. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to think of like words that like allowance or telling myself that my only problem is my separation from God right now and using this kind of language like really makes me feel better but at the same time I question like am I really connecting to something am I connecting to source right now or am I connecting to happy language you know what I mean Yeah. if you are doing what you've been instructed to do by that which you have been willing to accept would be something that would be a way that God is I said it right now. Like I've accepted that the way of master is a way for me to get information from a higher intelligence. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So if it tells me to say, I wonder what it would be like just to let things be as they are, to notice them as, as they let them pass by, then I would say it because that's what I was being told to say by the path that I have decided, decided to follow. To follow. Right. right. So and then so, so therefore that would based on that that's not just happy words, that's you following the instructions that you were being given. Okay. So therefore it would now here's a cool part that that, he, that in the course of miracles that Spirit said, he says in the workbook he says there's no need to practice what you already understand. He says what you need to practice is what you don't understand. And what you started out was, I don't, I kind of like don't understand exactly what right now whether it's a happy words, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying. And but then the book said, well, <coughs> just practicing. Right now, I can see this this differently, and I'm willing to see this differently. Or to say, I wonder what it would be like to let things be as they are and notice them and let them pass by. Or, my man over here, when you said it about allowance, see the problem is. We think we need to understand what allowance means, even though, even though it's telling us what it means, right? Because he says, we think unless we understand something, then it's not true and it doesn't work. And the course in these books, the, the, all these true books, saying you guys have got to let go of the belief that your understanding is a powerful contribution to anything. Mm -hmm. You've got to let go of that belief that your understanding is necessary for you to benefit from the truth. Because you don't understand it, and I don't understand it, but I want the freaking results. Right? I want the results. I want to fly from Denver to New York. I don't have to understand how the laws of aerodynamics work for me to get on a plane and fly there. And as long as we keep thinking we have to understand all the dynamics of something before it can work, that's like me refusing to get on the jet to fly to New York unless I understand how to fly it and I understand what the laws of, of, of the aerodynamics are. You, we've got to let go of that. We've got to let go of this idea that our understanding is a powerful contribution to God being able to work in our lives, the truth being able to work. And I'm saying it like this, and I'm saying it emphatically like this, not for you. Because <laughs> you're going to do whatever you want to do. I'm saying it for me. Yes? Well, I'd like to mirror back to you, since you're absorbing this for yourself as well, is I had a powerful 
beautiful experience today, really allowing that part of me to admit that I don't believe fully in God. And through the shadow and light of my whole life, I've really had a large capacity of that understanding as a resource. And lately, my life has um, become filled with fear and terror and aggression, and I've lost that larger percentage of yes to God, and I had to allow today that there is a part of me that doesn't believe in that. And I just had to allow it, and I had to speak the words to people and be heard and witnessed and not be the bright, shiny, spiritually long person, but the one who has walked this path, and now there's a part of me that doesn't believe in the fullness of it and how to just allow it. And in that allowing, there was a space for me to know that there's more filling up that's possible. And I actually had the CEO of my company go behind closed doors and pray for me out loud and call in God and divine and went into ritual. And it was like, are these just fluffy words? They're just words. Mm -hmm. But they're all I have right now mm -hmm. in the shadow. They're just words. And my hope is that those words build up strength and build up courage so when you get slapped in the face you're not just allowing the outside world you can allow your inside world to come out you can allow your love your power your strength to come through so sometimes the pretty words are all you have and what's funny is that what people are calling pretty words are usually the truth they're not pretty words just pretty words that's the truth, that there is the power in you, and there is the love in you. And our ego is so crafted that it, it'll make us look at, quote unquote, the pretty words as what's really not real, but all of the terror, and the upset, and the guilt, and the anger, and all of that. We don't hear people say, well, that's just, pretty, you know, just ugly words. <laughs> we, we see everybody deal with them as if, as if it's the truest thing that's ever been said. We don't go, oh, I just called myself a no good bastard. Oh, that was just ugly words. <laughs> you know, we go, oh my God, let me see what I can do to get rid of that idea of me being an ugly bastard. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going, oh, ugly words, ugly words. You know? Mm -hmm. um, so something Thank that you, you for sharing, by the way. Everybody that shared, thank you so much. Something that you've said and something I've heard before is um, when I was starting off on my kind of spiritual journey, I went up to this old guy and I said, how do you know if you're in God's will? And he said, are you happy? And then something that you say is something along the lines of, you know you're with spirit or whatever if you feel lighter. So like, if these words are making you feel good, Maybe it's spirit. And what's wrong with feeling good? What's wrong with feeling good? You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, just, you know, just words, they make you feel good. That's a good use of words that you never asked me <laughs> would be that they made you actually feel good. That's a good start, like you were saying. But in, it's, like, it's like it says, if you're in God's will, you're happy. Kind of give some thought to this. When, when the average person says they're happy, they're just saying the script that I wrote looks like it's being acted out. When the truth says, are you happy? It's talking about a joy that's coming from within that is unshaken by anything that's happening. So, <laughs> so theoretically, that's why Jesus, quote unquote, could be on the cross and be crucified and still have peace. His happiness wasn't based on, if they didn't crucify me, then I'm going to have joy. His joy was knowing his connection with source, and that he couldn't be destroyed because he wasn't a body that was on the cross. So as long as you see yourself as a body, none of this is really going to make a friggin' bit of sense until we begin to entertain the thought that we may be more than what we think we are. As long as we're looking at it from just a human being perspective, all of this kind of stuff is going to seem nuts. It's only going to make any sense at all when we're willing to just play with the idea that you could be a spiritual being having a human experience. Not that you're a human being trying to be spiritual. <laughs> Stop thinking of yourself as a human being trying to be <laughs> spiritual. It'll never work. <laughs> because you're more than that. Yeah. I always say, I'm not a human being, I'm being human for a while. There you go. I'm not a human being, I'm just being human for a while. Yeah, good. That's great. All right, let's go on. Let's go further. 
Take a breath, please. Ah, because this this causes weariness sometimes. He said it would. Y'all gonna get weary, okay? Why? Because you're being told you're freaking okay, you're gonna be okay, you love no matter what, you can't do it wrong, will depress you mightily. <laughs> I've never seen people get more depressed than when they're told how much they're loved and okay. That's what we do. The ego does that. It's the part of me that believes I'm not okay. And so what you're saying to me, Earl, is an affront. You a bald-faced liar. To say I'm not a sinner, to say I'm not guilty, that's a lie. That's what the, that's what the part of us that doesn't love us believes about us. So when I say you are loved, that part is not pleased. That means all the punishment that we're tempted to give ourselves, we're doing it for nothing. Yeah, pitiful, it's, the, it's just like you beating your butt all day long by yourself in the room and nobody knows it. It's like, what's the point? That's what the court says, we don't use it like, the, like we really want to be sad, we wait till we got, at least got somebody to watch it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's the point of me being all miserable and nobody knows. <laughs> so, so I gotta make sure somebody can see it. And that's cool. As long as you let somebody see it who doesn't believe it. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it let all your fears come up around somebody who does not believe you are your fears. But please try not to show any vulnerability to somebody who thinks you are your fears. Because long after you change your mind and you're not even upset anymore, afraid anymore, they'll still be seeing you as that way. Are you okay? Are you, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? For the next six years, you got over six years ago. Because they don't know the truth, that you're an innocent, holy child of God, that you are totally vulnerable, <laughs> who you really are, cannot be affected. But temporarily, you were not allowing, and so you were going through some stuff. But the first thing to do is admit to yourself, there is a part of me that feels afraid, that does feel separate, that does feel unsupported right now. Don't do that old phony, I, I, I trust everything you know you don't right now. So now he's going to get more into what allowance means. He says allowance then is the doorway through which Christ, which is just another word for saying your true self, passes into complete remembrance of the Christ, the true self. So allowance is what allows <clears throat> you to pass into complete remembrance of who you really are as opposed to who you think you are. How do you know, how do you know when you don't know who you really are? You feel afraid when you've forgotten. So it's no such thing as you being upset and you being yourself. There's no such thing as being in lack and sickness and upset and you're really being yourself. That's when you're not being yourself. You, you don't have in that relationship because you're in a relationship that you're not being yourself. You're afraid to communicate because you're not being yourself. Uh, if you see yourself having lack, it means you're not being yourself. If you feel lonely, it means you're not being yourself. If you wonder if you're going to be supported, it means you're not being yourself. Based on that definition, how often during the day are you not being yourself? <laughs> How many of you are not being yourself right this very moment? Why? Because I'm not in the state of ecstatic <coughs> bliss and awareness of my connection to source. If I really believe that admitting that would be the key to allowance and letting myself be healed, I'd like my uncle would be flying across the room if I would have disconnected. Yes! You're right, I don't believe it. I don't believe I'm connected to source right now. I really don't allow. I really do want my perceptions to be right. I'm really not taking responsibility yet. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Mm -hmm. That's what I would be saying if I really believe that admitting and getting out of denial and allowing work. 
<laughs> that's, that's exactly the reaction. That is exactly the reaction that the court says our ego will have to the truth. It, 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 that's it. That's it. She did that for, that, what just for you, baby? You did that for a lot of people in here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it is, it is wearying to be found out. For the ego to be found out is wearying to it. It makes you go unconscious. That's the proof of what we're studying being true because we're acting it out. So that's beautiful. Thank you. I know we're going to get a chance to have a, a real-time demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to Depart Chopin one time, and I fell over in the aisle in this big gathering. I went so unconscious on him that I fell in the aisle. <laughs> like, like most people, they just drop their program or something. You know, like I see people in the room, like you, all of a sudden you hear the chorus but fall on the floor, you know what I'm saying? You know, somebody just went past out while I was in my class. Blue flop, and they go, you know. And I fell over in the aisle. You know, whatever he was saying, I had so much resistance to that I literally fell asleep. Because when I'm hearing people with Indian accents, it puts me to sleep anyway, because it sounds the same. It almost sounds like monotone to me. <laughs> and say I'm black. You know, I'm used to all kinds of dynamic ranges of expression, you know. So that's what's so cool about how the truth always comes to you in the form that's best for you. And so even to this day, I wonder what he was saying <laughs> when I fell out on the floor. It was really so embarrassing. <laughs> I just have to allow it. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I thought I had a black belt in higher consciousness and being able to listen to advanced beings talk. It was like, Bloop, I'm right in the middle of the floor. <laughs> you know. And the Course in Miracles is like that. You'll be reading the Course in Miracles and you'll be knocked out cold. And you'll be wondering, what happened? I was right awake till I started. <coughs> and this book is the same way. You know, unless, unless you've gotten to the point, like he says, it excites you when at the point you believe it's going to get you what you want. Mm -hmm. He says, if you really believe that this was going to get you what you wanted, attention would be no problem. He says, the attention problem is that I think the problem is something else. Does it make sense? You're not telling me what I think the problem is, way of mastery. Mm. Right. He says, allowance brings a deepening sense of freedom, freedom from all circumstance, for it is your circumstances that you have believed have the power to imprison you. So I'll say it again. Allowance brings a deepening sense of freedom from all circumstance because it's your circumstances <coughs> that you have believed have the power over you to imprison you. So I am unhappy because I believe that the circumstance that I am in has the power to imprison me. I am unhappy because I believe that this person has the power to imprison me. I am unhappy because I believe this financial circumstance has the power to imprison me. I feel unhappy because I believe the circumstances that I am in have the power to imprison me. Then he says, for as you choose to relinquish your perception of the world of any circumstance, you discover that you are already abiding in freedom. So as you let go of the perception that the thing that has you upset has power over you, you will realize you are already free of the thing that you think has power over you. So if I'm in a relationship with a person and it looks like they have such power over me and this situation has power over me, it's because I have not allowed myself to accept the truth that I am the one that's creating how I am seeing it. If I don't allow myself <laughs> to accept that I am not the victim of this situation, then it will seem to imprison me as long as I deny I'm imprisoning myself. 
So a person stays in a limiting situation as long as they think the limiting situation is being created by anything other than their own perceptions. Mm. So, so, so where is it in your life that you think you're not creating what's happening? It's the area of your life that you feel the most vulnerable, weak, helpless, afraid, and the victim of. So right away I know where I'm still giving my power away. Mm. Then ask yourself, what is the payoff that I'm getting out of keeping it this way? What is the payoff that I'm getting out of the situation that's upsetting me? How do I know there's a payoff? Because I'm not willing to take responsibility for what's happening, which would get rid of it. I'm not ready to get rid of it yet. I'm so I'm going to allow it, and that's the trick. Because if you allow it, that's also going to get rid of it. That's really tricky, Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, if you were to say, I'm selfish, I allow it. Try it. I think I'm not <laughs> kind enough. I allow it. To see what happens. It's going to freak you out. You're going to freaking become kinder. Deep. He said, as you choose to relinquish your perception of the world of any or any circumstance, you discover that you are already abiding in freedom, the power, and that is what freedom is is a power to create differently. Freedom is the power to create differently. And to create is the effect of what you will choose to see. So allowance can be thought of as a resistance. Take this out. Allowance can be thought of as a resistance being melted from your nervous system which is just an aspect of your mind anyway. Your nervous system is just an aspect of your mind. And allowance is your resistance being melted away. Allowance is like you opening the palms of your hands instead of holding on so tightly, you simply let go. <coughs> so what do you let go of? Okay, it's time for me to let go. Now, I just want to throw this out for the fun of it. You're totally innocent. Who is having a hell of a hard time staying conscious and willing to admit it? All right, allow it. Allow it. Allow it. Allow yourself to go unconscious. Allow it. Allow it. You better get rid of the pressure. Because if it's too great a resistance anyway, the temptation would be to not come back. Because we want to attend stuff that we enjoy. But if we can remember that we were told we would resist, then we would go ahead and feel the resistance and still keep giving ourselves the truth. But if I make liking it and always feeling good, a condition of whether or not I let the truth come into me, then you'll never let it in. And then I have to watch the part of me that wants to go, what can I do to make sure that you won't stay wide awake and stay turned on and excited about my class? Because if you don't, I'm not a good teacher. If all my cats fall out on the floor, that's not a good sign. <laughs> 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 well, maybe it is. You know, I'm having major breakthroughs. No, I'm just telling you how to put the ego says. So, I'm just saying what you know, the teacher ego. The teacher ego says you're supposed to always make everybody just happy and excited and glad to hear what you say and how you say it. And then, then, then your true self said, "That's bull. <laughs> you're not responsible for how somebody else is reacting." They're responsible for how they react. 
free these people, love these people, let them have their reactions in any way they need to have their reaction. You tell somebody something, let them have their reaction. They don't have to necessarily like what you're saying or respond with kindness and love when you tell them. Let them have their reaction. Their reaction might be, go to hell. Mm -hmm. Or their reaction might be, God, I'm glad you told me that. Or their reaction might be, you see what I'm saying? It's like you'll never be honest with anybody as long as you're concerned about how they're going to react to what you say. Nobody really hear what you really think or feel. If you set the condition that they got to like it, or you don't want to hurt their feelings, and I'm saying that because I'm always concerned about hurting somebody's freaking feelings. When I'm just telling the truth about how I feel, <coughs> it's not I'm going to attack you, so now I'm going to tell you the truth of how I feel. Mm. That's not the way we do it. We just want to say how we feel, what's coming up for us right now. Then their meaning creates their reaction, and you don't have any control over that. So you have to allow people to have their own reaction to whatever you're saying or doing. I'm such a control freak, I want everybody to respond in a very positive manner. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I realize that, man, I tell you, the real, to be in the kind of world that has the kind of authenticity and honesty that I think I want to live in, it would call for me to really be able to not have a script for everybody around me for how they should react. If I, if I, or else I can hang it up. I'll never be able to tell the truth as long as I feel like everybody's got to like it. I'm afraid of what would happen if I really let, really allowed myself to see how unreal all the love is around me. Because all you have to do to see how unreal the love is around you is say, well, for one week I'm going to do exactly what I want to do no matter what anybody around me thinks. And I'm going to say exactly what I feel as authentically as possible, regardless of how anyone else reacts. And you'll see really quickly how real your relationships are. And since most people know their relationships are not real, and they know they <coughs> are conditional, they just don't bother to do the things that they think would trigger somebody. Because they already know that it's not real. And so they don't want to do the thing that's going to, because they might still want to play with the person for a while. It's like, I know it's not real between us, but I, been, but I want to go to Hawaii with you. So I'm not going to do anything that's going to shake things up. You follow, you follow what I'm saying? You already know it's not real. That's why you're trying so hard not to offend. If you really knew it was real, you would share all your thoughts and feelings because you knew nothing you could say could, could really end the relationship. But because you know what you could say would end the relationship, we're very careful about what we say because we already know it's an illusion. Which we're trying to be in denial about. Because <laughs> we want to believe it's real. So even though I know I could do some stuff and you would never want to see me again, I'm going to try not to do those things. Because I know our relationship is very really? fragile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure, you know, even to the point I'll hide some things from you. Because I, I really want to be with you and I don't want the relationship to end. And I know if I reveal certain things to you, the relationship would end. And I don't want it to end. I want to be with you. So I think I'll skip over telling you about what happened last night. <laughs> Now you're going to call me a liar and you're going to say I'm a person who doesn't keep my word. But the truth <coughs> was I was afraid of loss which is the root cause of every lie. People lie when they're afraid to lose. They, if they know they can't lose they'll tell you the truth. I love to tell you I lost my mind for just a second and I just couldn't help it and I kissed this other person and now you're through with me and never want to see me again and I'm going to embarrass them and cheat and you hate me and you don't want to ever spend time with me anymore, ever, ever, ever. Why would I tell you? Well, you're supposed to. Well, not if I think I'm going to lose, I'm not. Well, what would happen if I told you, God, I lost my mind for a minute I just don't know what happened. I kissed the person and you went... 
What should I do, Holy Spirit? How should I see this? What would be the most loving response that I could give right now? What would be the thing that would be most healing for me to say? Then respond. Allow. So here, here is what we need to let go of. You ready? This is what he says we need to let go of. We need to let go of, number one, the habit of the need to be right. Number two, <clears throat> our habit of the need to see the world as being a frightening place. We, we have a habit, he says, of having a need to always see things as if we're in danger. So he says we, we, approach, we approach life as if we've got to always be protected from something. What is it that you need to let go of? The habit of perceiving that you are in lack. Let go of your habit of seeing yourself as in lack. The habit of seeing God as something that's a long way away from you. Like wherever God is, love is, the source is. It's somewhere that I'm not. It's somehow not connected to me. What is the thing that we need to let go of? Anything that is unlike the kingdom of heaven is a habit well worth receiving, releasing, <coughs> and allowing it to be dissolved from your mind. Anything that's unlike love, I want to form the habit of allowing it to be dissolved from my mind. Everything that is unlike love, I <coughs> let you be resolved from my mind. So the essence of this lesson is the cultivation of allowance. It begins with the willingness to relinquish the lid you guys have placed upon your own mind. Let go of the lid you're placing on your mind. Let go of the lid you're placing on your mind. Take the lid off your mind. Take the lid off your mind. How do you take the lid off your mind? You take the lid off your mind by letting go of the idea that you need to understand something for it to be true that I'm willing to conceive of answers, I'm willing to receive answers that I didn't think of. I'm willing to receive answers that I didn't think of. I'm willing to receive answers that I didn't think of. I'm willing to receive answers that I didn't think of. I'm willing to receive solutions that I didn't think of. Take the lid off your mind. He says, so that you can become able in innocence to simply observe how it really is, what's really going on down in the basement, Learn how to observe what's really going on down in your basement because you're going down in your basement and you're going to find out that your basement needs cleaning. So he says, so how do I look at my deepest, darkest, ugliest thoughts? He says, you do it without judgment. Stop judging them. He says, then he says, stop doing it with fear, <clears throat> and then without justification and without explanation. So whatever I discover about myself that's not loving, I'm going to stop judging it. I'm going to stop being afraid of it. I'm going to stop trying to justify it, and I'm going to stop trying to explain it and just go, it's there. That fear of God is there. That feeling like I got a grievance is there. That thinking that I'm selfish is there. That being mad at my parents is there. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to fear it. I'm not going to try to justify it. And most of all, I'm not going to try to explain it. It's there. Isn't it amazing that the mind would believe that that's difficult? Isn't that something? That, that, that the mind would actually say, that's difficult. That's not difficult at all. Just go, it's there. <laughs> I got some lack thoughts. It's there. He says, the cultivation of allowance will deepen a great deal if you merely put the exercise that we begin with into practice. 
Because when you allow it, you are cultivating the very quality of forgiveness. Forgiveness is allowance. I forgive you, I allow you. I forgive you, I allow it. I allow it, and now I'm going to choose how I'm going to see it, and I'm going to choose how I'm going to respond to it. Okay? You went out last night. You hooked up with somebody else. I allow it. Which is really kind of, you can't do nothing else at that point anyway. I allow it, right? And then I say, in this moment, I have the ability to choose something different. What do I want to choose now? Does that make sense? So it, isn't mean, it doesn't mean that anybody can do anything to you. It means you're going to allow it, and then I'm going to choose. Allow it, what am I going to choose? Allow it, how, how can I see it differently? I have anger about what you did. I will not judge myself for being angry. I will not fear myself for being angry. I will not try to justify my anger. I'm not even going to try to explain my anger. It's there. How do I want to see this now? Yes, Holy Spirit. Uh, I insist that you stop right now or you want to be arrested for the death of where your mastery students. <laughs> <laughs> they will come pick you up after the class. So, would y'all pretend to acknowledge yourself? So, <laughs> even let yourself appear. Hi, cool. That was hi, cool stuff right there. <laughs> it's been nice knowing y'all. <laughs> We're going to do the financial expression of appreciation. Please don't take it out on me. Okay. Thank you for sharing with me. I'm doing this stuff full time, so I thank you very much. On the internet, thank you so much for your financial expressions of appreciation. And if you want to make a financial expression of appreciation for being told you deserve to be loved and to allow, you can go to my website at earlpurdy.com. And I'm available for one on one sessions called Clarity Sessions. Go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and it explains the one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do. Okay, we're going to end this with your closing your eyes again. Just relaxing again. Do not make feeling joyful and excited and happy every second a condition of whether or not you allow yourself to hear the truth. You have to allow yourself to have every reaction. It's okay. Whatever your reactions are, it's okay. So just let yourself hear this. It is not possible for you to be without love. It is not possible for you to be alone. It is not possible for you to taste death. It is not possible for you to taste genuine loss. You can not lose. You cannot lose. You cannot lose. You cannot really lose anything. You cannot lose anything real. You cannot lose anything that's truly valuable. You cannot lose anything that's truly valuable. 
it's not possible for you to taste genuine loss. It's not possible for you to suffer the dream of separation. It's not possible for you to be apart from the Creator. It's not possible for you to be apart from God. It's not possible for you to be apart from love. It's not possible for you to fail. It's not possible for you to fail. <laughs> it is not possible for you to harm anyone or anything. It's not possible for you to harm anyone or anything. It's not possible for you to be guilty. Allow all things. Have a little smidgen of a willingness to not be right. Look at what's in the basement. But don't judge it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't justify it. And silently to yourself, tell yourself silently, I am free. In this moment, to choose to see things differently, I am free. I am free in this moment. In this moment. To choose, to choose, to see things differently, to see things differently. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. You are entitled to a healing in any situation that you're going through right now. You are entitled to miracles. You are entitled to miracles.